not very clearly choroditis and you feel there is something in the subretinal space. These are called subretinal lesions or subretinal deposits. Now I'm going to talk about what do you do if you see any subretinal lesions in the fibers. These subretinal lesions may appear yellow or they may appear white and we will go over them how you see them. So if you see subretinal lesions, sometimes you may even want to do OCT uh, because on OCT you will be able to distinguish a retinal lesion from a choroidal lesion and a subretinal lesion. <coughs> now if we look at the arrowheads, these lesions here, they are the retinal lesions and the arrow, sorry, this is the retinitis whereas when you look at the arrowhead, this is something of subretinal deposits. That is, if you are not able to see clinically, you may want to confirm it on OCT. Now, suppose you have seen clinically, the lesion appears subretinal. You have done OCT. You are sure it is subretinal. The next question is, what could be the lesions that could be subretinal? It could be deposition by the fibrin, by the lymphoma deposits, leukemias, Sometimes you may have severe inflammation with posterior hypopion or you may have non-urientic, non malignant diseases which can be confused with subretinal diseases. This is fibrin now. This is how fibrin looks like. It is linear. It is yellowish in color. It looks like deposit. And if you see a clear dot in the center of this yellow kind of the deposit, it is a case of CSR. So if you are confused between choroditis and CSR and you see this clear dot, it's CSR and not choroditis because this is the point from where the fluid is leaking and displacing the fibrin. This is the angiogram of the same patient which shows the lesions are hyper and becoming more hyper in the late phase, leaking. This is very different from choroditis. CSR lesions will be expanding like you see from here, hyper and more hyper. If it was choroditis, it will be hypo and then hyper in the late phase. So that helps in differentiating. I already told this, if you see clear dot sign, it's likely to be CSR and not coronavirus. The second part is there may be deposits of lymphoma. Now lymphoma deposits are very typical. They get deposited between the RPE and Bruce membrane. So that is the characteristic of lymphoma deposits. So if you have these lesions which are yellowish, which are subretinal and you are not sure what it is, get an OCT through them and the OCT shows these bumps and you see something deposited between the RPE and the Brooks membrane, this is most likely to be due to lymphoma. Another important feature of lymphoma is that lymphoma deposits can appear, disappear on their own and even on corticosteroid therapy. When you do autofluorescence in patients with lymphoma, you will see these uh, tegroid appearance or the leopard skin appearance. This leopard skin appearance is very typically seen in lymphoma and not in other forms of choroditis or retinitis. Sometimes these deposits may actually be seen as a sheet. For example, one of our patients here. Now, this is again the lymphoma deposits in the subretinal disease and it is called vitally formed lymphomatous macrophagy. So, you do not typically see cystoid macular edema in lymphoma, which is a very important differentiating factor for lymphoma. OCT biomarkers, if you want to look at the lymphomas, lymphoma typically produce these lesions in filtrates in the retina, which are a double roof configuration, and then there are deposits in the subretinal space. 
and sub So these are the biomarkers. Leukemia. Leukemia is another thing where you may have the deposits and the sub space. They tend to be more white. They are not leopard skin like, are deposited. They are more white. They have hemorrhages and they are typically in the sub space. For example, this child had leukemia, which was not diagnosed, had fever, cough, lethargy. He was diagnosed as tuberculosis based on the eye features. But this is not tuberculoma. Tuberculoma is yellow, that is a decoroid. These are just the deposits of lymphoma in the sub space. You treat the lymphoma and the journey disappears. You don't have to normally give any intravitreal therapy for lymphoma deposits. This arrow here indicates posterior hypopion, which means there is hypopion which is in the sub space. And this posterior hypopion is along with a lot of other things which are happening, even the interior hypopion. So this is something which we see in syphilis and it's very important to examine the hands of the patient. The hands of the patient showing typical lesions on the palms, multiple varicose nodules in the perineal region and of course we also have CNS involved. So it can produce, so you treat for syphilis and it responds. And my last part is that you may have some non-uveitic diseases which are not uveitis, which are not deposits, but sometimes you can confuse. This child had IgG4 disease and had something like this. And when we did the autofluorescence, we saw that there were traps. Now this is not a feature of either a subretinal deposit are the retinitis, are choroiditis. So what is it? History is very important. Child was playing with a laser pointer and we have a lot of these laser pointers now in the toys and other things which if they shine into the eye can produce laser burns like this which can be confused with uveitic entities. In this patient it was confused because he had a associated systemic disease. So many of them may receive unnecessary steroids and treatment. And this is the classical OCT of laser scars. If you see it, it doesn't have any other disease which would produce an OCT like this. Post fever, many a times decreased vision, just do the autofluorescence. If the autofluorescence shows this kind of picture, this is very classical PPCRA which can happen after fever or after other etiologies. Again, I'm not getting into the treatment part this yet, but this is where you know that you don't have to do any intervention. So to conclude, the sub space, first thing which will give you an idea that something is in the sub space is when you do the OCT, it is in the sub space. It is not continuing either with the pigment epithelium R is not the part of the retina. When you look at the configuration anatomically, it does not fit in any definitive configuration. It is just there in the subretinal space, some deposit, something. And uh, if it is there, then you have to understand that the etiologies are very different. It could be fibric. Fibric mostly happens in central serous retinopathy and in very severe cases of EKH. You may be able to see fibrin deposited into this. So it's important not to confuse between BKH and CSR, especially when there is fibrin. And if you look at that clear dot sign, that will be in CSR and not in BKH. Lymphoma deposits, somewhere uh, 40s to 60s age group, first time uveitis, you are seeing yellowish lesions, you see leopard skin on autofluorescence, do not give steroids. Now this is the patient who needs biopsy and lymphoma. Leukemia patients are generally younger patients, whitish deposits, hemorrhages on top of them, and they won't be multifocal. You generally see one large big deposit. And many times in leukemia, you will have the vessels which will be dilated and tortuous. 
Posterior hypopion generally does not come alone. It comes with other pathologies which are happening with it. So that will give you a clue towards the possible etiology. And lastly, the diseases which are not truly subretinal but which could be mimicked with subretinal. For example, I gave an example of a laser scar. So these are kind of uveitis masquerades which you have to be very clear so that you don't start the treatment in Edward. So with this, if there are any questions, yes or no. It is visible clinically. On the slit lamp bar microscopy, if you are using 90D or 78D, it's clearly visible. Indirect you may miss because it's a small dot. So it, you will see it very well on fundus photography or the clinical examination. Thank you. Posterior hypopion generally what you see when we say diabetes, we say a boat shaped hemorrhage when the blood deposits there. Similarly, when there are too many white cells and few of the cells get accumulated in the posterior hyaloid space, we call it posterior hypopion. It is not seen very commonly. We see a lot of patients with severe uveitis, but posterior hypopion is not very commonly seen. It is a rare area. However, if you see it, you look for the other things which are happening all over the fundus, and most likely it is because of the infection, you know. And that infection, I showed an example of syphilis patient who developed posterior hypopion. But it may not be syphilis, it may be toxocaina, it may be other. So when you see posterior hypopion, you try to look for the associated findings which are producing hypopion. Because that's a secondary event. Primary is something else which is produced. So you have to be careful and mindful of infectious etiology if you are seeing that. Don't jump to start students. Thank you.